with American Business Systems. And want to welcome you here uh, this afternoon. What a great afternoon it looks like we're going to have with this particular topic. And actually, every topic that we do is great, I think, <laughs> because it's, it talks about how we can help you get your business kicked off. And one of the days, things we want to do today is truly uh, kind of take a step-by-step -step approach on some of the things you should be doing part of your due diligence as you're getting ready to hopefully launch your business with us here at American Business Systems or uh, in any business that you might want to be investing in. So, uh, Patrick, if you can uh, not only share your, your webcam and make sure that we can hear you loud and clear through the speakers. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. I'm just, You're muted. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fooling with you. Uh, okay, hey, this is a great webinar. By the way, before we get started, I wanted to show this book. Those of you who are watching live get to see this book. Uh, those of you who are listening to the recording of this don't get to see this book. <laughs> but this is, a, this is a book by Entrepreneur Magazine. They've been around for about 35 years. This is called Startup. And this book is on Start Your Own Medical Claims Billing Service. Well, guess what? That's part of what you'll do as an ABS licensee. And the reason I bring this book up is because we're the only company that's listed in here that's still in business. Uh, you can see right there at the bottom of this page where it actually lists our name. There's another company on the top of the next page, but they're out of business. So you know what, folks? We've been around for, well, it's 21 years now, Eric, isn't it? Exactly, yeah. And we'll be yeah. here a long time. But the reason we're here is because people do their due diligence, and they really do research this industry and find out that, we're the only choice. I mean, that's what it boils down to. When it comes down to learning how to start a business, uh, this is the company that you want to do business with because, guys, there's lots of ways to learn how to do medical billing. Books like this, you know, this is 20 bucks. Uh, but it doesn't really tell you all that you need to know and give you the secrets we learned over the last 21 years on how to build a business. That's the real difference, isn't it, Eric? It, it is. And, and I think before we get started, I'd love uh, if you could share just a snippet of what we heard from one of our licensees that just have gone through our class. We were just talking about him, Tim. Uh, just briefly, yes. just kind of share a little bit about, uh, you know, because Tim was on the side of where these licensees, uh, these prospects are right now that were on the side over there on that web, that uh, the, the webinar. So let's kind of take him through that little journey of where he was and where he is today. Well, it's amazing because uh, he just went through training back in, uh, I think it was November, maybe December. Anyway, it's pretty recent. And he's already built his business to the point where he just signed up a client, Eric. Now, get this. This is hard for me to wrap my brain around. <clears throat> this is a $10 million a year client. That's mm -hmm. right. He'll be billing for this group of doctors $10 million a year. And uh, we tell people that you can price it, of course, any way you want to, but what we know is the national average runs somewhere around 5%. I hardly ever see anything less than 5 And somewhere around 8 to 9 that's about on the upper end. Listen to this. Now, he, he only charged them 3%. Wow. Have you done the math on $10 million, 3% of that? That's not too bad. It's a, it's a lot of money. It's $300,000 yeah. a year for just him, just for his part. Uh, and exactly. then, of course, the doctor is going to be uh, thrilled because we're going to take his rejection rate from an average of about 34 uh, percent to less than 2 percent rejection. So he'll be bringing in a whole lot more money as well. Exactly. And, and that kind of goes along with the question. I know we haven't got any questions in yet, but I do want to kind of just spark the interest of, of, of asking questions here. That kind of goes along with a lot of people who ask questions about doctors that are being bought out by uh hospitals or going uh, or doing this because uh, a lot of people think well I, I hear all the scuttle about doctors leaving their private practice going and getting bought out by hospitals we, but we don't care if the doctors right. join like this group this is a group of doctors they join together they still want to outsource their billing and not handle it themselves so exactly it's fine however we have heard doctors go to work for a hospital realize that they are limited on the things they can do uh, their time of course is the hospital's time they get paid only what the hospital thinks they're worth and they can't take off on a vacation when they need to they are actually quitting those hospitals and going back into private practice and the sad That's part is that they, they lost so it's patients at that point because the patients uh, are now uh, patients of the hospital so right but they're willing to do that, Eric. That proves how desperate they are to get back into private practice. They're willing to start from scratch. Exactly. So, yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of great opportunity here. So again, as we are kind of getting you started here with some of your questions, look over in the question box, 
feel free to type in any of your questions over there. Uh, we would, we actually want your questions because it helps us make sure that uh, your your questions are being answered throughout the entire presentation. And your question may be a question that someone listening later might want to ask as well. Hey, let's do this, uh, folks. Just to make sure that you really do know where that question box is, I want each one of you to type in where you're from. Just their city and state would be fine, uh, or just the state if you want to. And we just kind of want to see that you're actually listening to us and that you're actually typing. It will prove to you that this is a live webinar because we're going to read those out right now. There we go. There we Here go. They come in. All there right. We so we got Cynthia from uh, Fairview, Oregon, and Lamar from uh, Night. Dale, North Carolina. We've got Julie from Minnesota, uh, Melissa from Illinois, Isaac from Florida, Kenny from Puerto Rico. Good to have you here. So uh, Tammy from Maryland. Good to have everyone here. There are others here that uh, Kenny from wants to Mira, uh, Lazare from Rhode Island. Yeah. So yeah. Great. well, now you know where to type in the uh, the questions. We don't use the chat box. Uh, for this type of thing. We just use the question box the whole time. So any comments you want to put in there, fine, as we go along. And I'll be kind of monitoring that here as we go. Good. Okay, Eric, right. well, let's jump right into your steps here. These are some terrific things you came up with on what people need to do to do their due diligence. Let's define due diligence. Uh, absolutely. Well, due diligence is nothing more than just doing your digging and, and your discovery about any particular company or anything else that you're doing. But the first thing we always tell you is, is uh, check out the company just go out there and check out the company, especially if you're going to get involved in medical billing. Because Patrick, you know and I know, uh, anybody on this call today can go out and go buy a piece of software, but now you've got a piece of medical billing software. What do you do with it from there? Yeah, and how do you actually get clients? Do they know what they're doing? Have they actually done it themselves like I did when we started the company? And do they have people who train you that are actually doing it themselves, not just some staff member that you know, gets on the phone and guides you through some scripted uh, stuff that they come up with. Folks, where the unique the uniqueness of this whole company is that we've got things that nobody else has ever come up with, and some of those we'll cover today, of course. So yes, yeah. all of these things are doing your due diligence, it's called, as you research a company. Any company, ours, anybody else's, these are some of the things you need to do. Yeah, especially the live training. I know that there are other companies that do training, they do training online. Uh, and they think that that might be good enough for them. However, Patrick, just real quickly, talk about the, the as best as you can, the importance of live training. Well, look, there's, there's, you think you can just sit and maybe uh, get some training over the phone, or maybe somebody offers to do it through GoToMeeting, or watching some DVDs, for example, but folks, nothing, nothing comes even close to the experience that you have when you're in a live workshop situation. Look, you've seen some of the pictures of our training class that Eric will show you, and, and there is set up as a, as a conference room. In other words, we want everybody facing everybody else. Right. You have structures in the middle, and you are actually interacting with other people. Look, there's other people there that are the same place you are. They're, they're starting from scratch, right? Most of them, no background in the medical field, just like most people who come through our training. And you're interacting with those people and hearing questions from those folks that you probably wouldn't think of. I've had many, many people go, wow, that's a great question. I wish I'd have thought of that. Uh, so it's, it's just, you can't beat it. And of course, we have the interactive uh, stuff with the instructor, uh, little pop quizzes, we call them, and fun stuff that just helps you remember all of this stuff, because we cover a lot in that uh, five days. We certainly do. And one more thing on this screen before we, we pop off of this, and it's those last two words down at the bottom, longevity and stability. Uh, Patrick? You know, I think one of the things that, that uh, sits well with everybody is that ABS has been around for t 21 years, but actually you and your wife were doing billing even before that. So Yeah, I, I don't even know if, you, if we mentioned that earlier when you showed the picture there of the office. That's Linda, my wife of 47 years, and she started doing the medical billing back in 1987. And uh, then we built it from there. We got to the point where people were asking us, how did you do this? And so we thought, well, there must be a market for teaching other people how to do it and duplicating right. our success. And so we just took off from there. We sold the accounts that we have. We don't actually do medical billing as a company now, but we've got people, of course, who teach the classes who are actually our licensees out running their business in the real world every day. Exactly. All right, well, let's, uh, let's keep going on with that. But remember folks, 
find out if you're, that company you might be doing business with, do they do live training, do they have a guarantee, which we'll talk about here towards the end. Talk about the support, the technology, and that longevity and stability there within that company. Talking about stability, we're talking about an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau. Patrick, why don't you uh, kind of talk a little bit about the Better Business Bureau, and I, I know that when some people go to that uh, website, uh, they, they love to see that A-plus rating. Uh, how in the world did you get there? <laughs> well, you know what? We just do what we say we're going to do, and if there ever is a complaint, we, we work with people. And so over 21 years, guys, for you to still have an A+, plus, it doesn't get any better than A+. Plus. Uh, that's like on Angie's list. I use that a lot for local contractors to do stuff around my home. I won't deal with anybody that's got less than a B rating, and I look for the right. A's. So this is important because the Better Business Bureau has been around for 100 years at least, and they are the standard that's out there when you're dealing with somebody uh, over the Internet like you're dealing with us or any other company. So just be sure and check out anybody's rating. It's simple. Type uh, BBB and then the name of the city and state that that company's in. If you do uh, that for us, you'll see it comes up with a little search box and you can type in American Business Systems like you see here at the top of the screen. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, check us out. There's the actual screen capture of uh, the page that we're on there on the Better Business Bureau. As you can see, it's an A+. It doesn't Absolutely. get any better than that. Yep, it shows our phone number, how you get in touch, contact with us. And I know that uh, sometimes it's hard to uh, get away from this, but uh, some people are going to say, well, Patrick, uh, what about this not BBB accredited? And we're not going to spend a lot of time on that. We don't want to get bogged down in that. But just just real quickly, what does that mean? And then we'll get off of that and we'll, we'll go on into some other information here. All it means is that we have not paid to be a member of the Better Business Bureau. That's all it means. And we don't need to. Uh, do that because we have an A plus rating. Some companies will pay that because it helps increase their rating a little bit. Well, when you're an A plus, it doesn't get any better. So there's no need for us to uh, pay that thousand dollars a year, whatever it takes to to be a member uh, of the Better Business Bureau. They're going to rate you uh, according to what they hear from the public, uh, no matter what. Exactly. And then it's talking about stability. This is actually a letter that uh, it was drafted up by your attorney, talking about that your ABS is a uh, is a privately held company and uh, talks about your what you what you're doing and and so once you share a little bit about this and if people want to get a hold of this get with your ABS rep we'll certainly get you a copy of this as well but talk a little bit about uh, your attorney writing this up for you well the reason we did that Eric is because sometimes people will ask us for financials on the company uh, right. we're a privately owned company and just like any privately owned company you don't have to reveal anything to anybody because you know you're not on the stock market for example but right. we have nothing to hide so I said to my attorney look can you put it in writing that we are stable financially and as you can see he says it very clearly there uh, they've been in business since 1994 and uh, the company has been profitable every year since starting and is debt free uh, folks that's the most important thing about any company are they close to going out of business and we're not because we're, we're very uh, cash flow friendly. And that's a good thing because our licensees are out there signing up doctors every single day. And Eric, I, we haven't even mentioned this, but some people know that we make money on the back end. Yes, sure. there's a licensing fee to become an ABS licensee. But then after that, you can stay a licensee forever. Support is forever. There's no cost. You never spend another penny with us. But we make money on the services that you offer to the doctors. The doctors basically are paying a few pennies uh, in, in their fees to us as a company. And that's all back from our technology partners on the back end. Exactly. So folks, that's step one. Uh, step one, we just try to take as much as we could of just saying, these are some of the things you need to be investigating with the company. Uh, these are some of the things you can investigate and do your, your due diligence with us and your discoveries with us here at AB, uh, AB, ABS. And so just feel free to ask us any questions. We've got some questions coming in. Tammy, I see your correct question, and I'm going to get to that question because we're actually going to talk about that in just a moment. So uh, don't think that we haven't come across your question yet, Tammy. We're actually going to answer that question real quickly. Now, all right, so Patrick, we know that this is a business opportunity, and then there's a one-time fee with us. Uh, so let's talk about funding. Let's talk about the difference between unsecured loans versus secured loans. I know a lot of people wonder about how to fund this particular business, but uh, it's interesting to you because you've known you actually you've known our family now for seven years, and you know my oldest son is a banker. Right. We actually kind of got some of this information from him about what to do about unsecured loan versus secured loans, business loan versus private loans. 
Yeah, banks uh, are very, uh, they're, they're not very risk averse. You know, they, they want to be very careful when they loan people money. So usually uh, when they loan money, it's on a home or a car or something that they can go and get back, you know, and resell it for something. Uh, with this, uh, a business, uh, especially one that's not a retail space business like ours, you can run this from your home in your pajamas if you want to, uh, you know, this is not something that they can come and repossess. So it's right. called an unsecured loan because there's nothing to secure it. So right. it's hard for a bank to wrap their head around what we're doing, and they are not one to usually invest in any brand new business opportunity or franchise. Yeah, so whenever if you're going to go to your bank and ask for a loan, it's been recommended by to us by someone we know very well as a branch manager of a bank. Uh, he he has informed us if you're going to go in there, make sure that you're going to go get a personal loan or what's called a personal line of credit, uh, and that's going to be based upon your credit and your credit history. Uh, certainly, you have to have decent credit to get that. Uh, but if you do that, it's like one page that you need to fill out. However, if you go in and say anything about your business that you want a small business loan or you weren't going to do anything. You go from uh, line A to line B, yeah. and you get from one paper to a stack of papers, and then you have to have this whole business um, plan put together, and you better have been in business in this industry for at least two years. Yeah. So what they're looking for really is, are they going to get their money back, right? And look, right. when they loan you money to uh, remodel your kitchen, there's no guarantee that you're going to pay that back. So your personal loan could be for literally anything. You're adding a carport on, you're putting a pool in. It doesn't matter. $25,000 nowadays is not a big loan to a, to a bank. Right. All they want to know is that your credit is good. So like Eric said, this is all based on your credit. That's all it is. Now, there's other ways, though, to get funding as well. Yeah, and I think the first people after the bank, they run to the Small Business Administration. So, Patrick, you want to talk about your experience, 21 years of dealing with the SBA? Not one time has anybody ever gone to the SBA and actually gotten approved for a loan for our business. Now, let me tell you why. Because, first of all, their minimums are somewhere around $50,000 that they want to loan you. And they usually want to loan that based on your history or your background in that industry. Well, folks, as I said earlier, most of the people who get in our business have no background in the medical field or especially in medical billing. So you're not going to be able to say that you have that. And again, the funding goes up to you know half a million dollars with the SBA. So $25,000, like I said a while ago, that's nothing. That's To them, that's not even worth messing with. So you, you, All right. you can't so depend on the SBA. Yeah, so let's talk about how, as we know from statistic-wise, about 60% of uh, startups actually get going. How, how do they get their funding, Patrick? Well, uh, there's very simple simple ways that most people come up with it. First is, uh, you know, directly from the business owner themselves. Now, that's through business uh, credit cards. We'll talk about that here in a second. Uh, personal credit cards, believe it or not. Home equity loans. Of course, you can get a loan to, uh, you know, reprove your house or whatever, or refinance your home. And then, of course, there's private investors. We'll talk about where you may have private investors that you don't know about. And even a, a company that actually helps people take their 401k money that they've set aside in the previous uh, industry and apply that to this industry and get their money back. And it's very, very uh, easy way to, to get funding. So let's yes. talk about credit cards to begin with, Eric. Uh, I can't yeah. tell you how many people have started this business with uh, either one or more credit cards. Uh, that's because Entrepreneur Magazine says in another one of their books that I happen to have right here, Start Your Own Business, that that's one of the ways that most small business owners start and fund their business is their own their own personal credit cards. Think about it. A credit card is just a line of credit. If you have a yes. credit card that has $10,000 you know, limit on it, then that's $10,000 that you can go and tell the bank that you want in cash and use that, of course, uh, for uh, you know starting your business. So you're literally just uh, putting on our application, for example, for a licensee, the, the credit card numbers. And like I say, numbers, because some people have put it on three or four or five, you know, it depends exactly. on how much credit they have on each one. 
Yeah, and so this is one way to kind of float your your business for a little bit. Some of them, Patrick, I know that there are folks that actually put their uh, the whole amount on their credit card just to get the points because they're going to pay it off anyway. Yeah. So it, it's a great way to leverage a little bit of, of your own money and your own good name on your own credit. I, I can't uh, point to this exact uh, quote in here, but I think Entrepreneur Magazine in this book, see it's by Entrepreneur also, says that... <clears throat> 48% of all small businesses are funded with the owner's own funds. That means in your savings account or on your credit card, they even mention credit cards. So it's a very valuable way to uh, raise money. Yeah, and, and I know that uh, probably outside of, you know, whether this is a good business or not, I think when people finally get that, they, they kind of crest that hill and said, yeah, that's what I want to do. Now, how do I fund this business? So yeah. folks, again, check this out. We've got a web a link down there, www.creditcards.com. Uh, we're not affiliated with them in any such, such way, but it's a place where you can at least start doing some of your own due diligence about your funding. Uh, again, you could go to the bank. If you're going to go there, personal line of credits. Secondly, uh, credit cards. So what about uh, home equity? Uh, you know, some people have been in their homes quite long enough that there's some equity built up into their homes. Patrick. Right. If you've been in your home, for example, uh, let's say, I don't know, even 10 years, you've got some equity built up in that. In other words, the home now is worth more than what you owe on the home. So the bank will loan you the difference there. Let's say it's, uh, you know, in those 10 years, you've paid uh, $30,000 towards your home. Then you would have that available to borrow against your home. And that just extends your uh, mortgage out a little bit further. Yep. So that might be a, neat, a little bit easier way. But what about private seed money? I think a lot of people, um, what, at least what I've seen on, on my end, that we I get a call, I get to talking with somebody, they love the idea, they're trying to figure out funding. And uh, one of the areas I point them is, is maybe a partner that they can kind of partner with, and uh, which we know is what's called private seed money. Yeah, uh, sometimes you'll even have a partner who's a private, uh, I mean, a, a silent partner. They're the money partner, basically. You're going to put in the sweat equity, so to, so called, and then they put in the actual capital to get the thing started. And you decide on what percentage that's worth to each person. And sometimes it's 50-50. Uh, and basically, that is how you fund it. Uh, so you don't put the money up. You put in the actual work of getting the business up and running and started. And uh, once the profits start coming in, of course, you're splitting that then with the person who put the money in. Exactly. So that that's another approach that you can make. Hey, that and could be talk. that could be your uh, you know your uncle. That could be your father-in-law. Right. It could be anybody that you know, even a relative that believes in you enough to uh, loan you some money. Remember, you could have four different partners, couldn't you? Or five or six. It doesn't matter uh, if somebody doesn't have the full twenty-five thousand dollar fee. Then just go to other people and say, look, I'm raising the funds, and and I'm going to give you a uh, you know ten percent ownership in my company. Right. Happens on Shark Tank every night, right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> All right. What about guided financial? I think this is this is one that we've actually kind of partnered with, and you were mentioning a little bit about the whole 401k portion of it. So let's let's kind of dive into that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, again, uh, for people who've worked for large corporations, they set up what they call a 401k. It's just an investment. Sometimes the company matches the funds that you put into it. In any case, that's your money, and you're supposed to hold that until you're ready to retire. This company actually works with people to make sure that you can get that money up front and not pay all the penalties that are due if you just cash it out, like, you know, before it's time to cash it out. So they do have a small fee involved in that. You can talk to them. Uh, I think it's guidantfinancial.com. Yep. Create qualification uh, forward slash a American dash business dash systems. Now, there it is. we could probably put that down in the chat area. Uh, but uh, that's actually on our funding page on our website as well. What it's going to do is going to land you on this this website right here, this landing page right here. It'll talk to you about uh, by completing the form below, you'll find out what types of funding you may be eligible to receive. Some of the options could be including your 401k rollovers, some SBA loans, unsecured credit, uh, and even equipment leasing. So, folks, there are some other opportunities. So we just say, say pull out every stop that you can. Right. Uh, there's the phone number up there that you can call them, 888-472-4455. Tell them you're with in, in looking into American business systems. They'll put you right over to the, to the person there that works at Guidant, kind of help you with that. 
uh, or if you just go on their website, it takes about five minutes to kind of fill in some information there, and uh, you'll you'll get within a little bit of some some information about how what kind of different types of fundings you can look at. I just put the link in the chat box down there. The chat box. Right. Has Perfect. The- yeah. So yeah, if you're looking to get some funding, whether it's credit cards, bank, uh, private seed money, home equity loans, guided financials, uh, folks, we, we're trying to provide you with every every aspect. And as Patrick said earlier, we're cash positive here at ABS, and we remain cash positive by us not doing any of the funding and and uh, and doing that whole loan portion of it. So it keeps us solvent. It keeps us to help you build your business. And so that's why we're giving every avenue that we can to help you get your funding put together. All right, let's jump right on here into a great topic. And I couldn't think of anything else uh, as you're kind of doing this. Some people like to say, hey, I want to go do a little pre-marketing. Should I, should I do that? Some business opportunities and franchise opportunities say, why don't you go do a little pre-marketing to see if this is it. Patrick, what about this particular business? Well, it's true with every business that everybody wants to know, is there a market for it out there, right? Is there really a market for it? And I think that's Tammy's question that we want to uh, uh, talk about here in just a second, because a lot of people have seen that medical billing companies come and go. Why did companies go out of business? That's the thing that we want to talk about. But let me say, first of all, if you go out and start, let's say you want to talk to uh, doctors in your area, you know, trying to get some leads ahead of time before you get into the business. Folks, sometimes that's a mistake because those doctors could be your best leads, but because you don't know the answers to all their questions, you basically burned your leads, your best leads, by going out and talking to them. Now, you might even talk to your own doctor, and maybe he's got his billing under control. Maybe he had a bad experience with another billing company, and so he's going to be negative about it. So again, your your pre-marketing could be positive or negative. Just believe us when we say that there is a market, folks. For doctors, because we see them being signed up every day by our licensees from coast to coast. And that's not just us, but other billing companies are still out there, uh, literally thousands of them probably from coast to coast. So why do some of those go out of business? Well, it's pretty simple. Those people just tried to learn on their own. Uh, They ordered this book or some (laughs) other course online, and they read it and said, hey, I think I'll start me a medical billing service. And they went out and tried it without having the tools that we've spent 20 years putting together without having the training, without having the support, the proposals, the pricing, the live demos, all the things that we give as a part of our licensing package. So companies go out of business every day. That's true. Yeah. So Tammy, hopefully that answered your question, but basically she said it was, she was kind of excited to see that uh, as she went through the yellow pages, uh, I didn't even know if there were still yellow pages out there. Maybe it's a, a, the electronic version of it. Uh, but many businesses are actually already listed out of business in the medical billing. And she kind of got excited, but then kind of got scared on the other side thinking, oh, wow, what's happening in this market? Uh, you know, Tammy, it's just, it, here's the thing. Most medical billing companies do not have the support mechanisms that you're going to find with ABS and the software that you're going to ha- actually have for those doctors. So, but what can you do? Uh, as pre-marketing, uh, and I will put this up here, Patrick, because I think this is good for us to kind of at least uh, pull back the curtains just a little bit of some things that they could do. So do some what we call market analysis, not pre-marketing. Right. When you're doing market analysis, you're analyzing the market that's out there, and there's a lot of ways you could talk to your CPA, your attorney, uh, you know, real estate agents. Uh, you could even find out if there's medical people who are in sales to the medical field and talk to them about what's going on out there. Pharmaceutical reps, for example, we've had a lot of licensees hire sales reps. Now, again, you don't want to do any of that actual hiring until you get to training because we're going to teach you exactly how to find them, how to train them. Uh, We've got contracts between you and the sales reps and all kinds of ways to pay them uh, on a commission basis. And then you can even go to some business networking groups. Eric, tell them about some of the business networking groups uh, that are out there. Yeah, I mean, folks, you can go to BNI. Uh, that that's that's probably the biggest one out there. Uh, however, there are other different types of business networking groups. Uh, a lot of business uh, professionals, CPAs, attorneys, real estate, they'll meet for breakfast. They'll meet maybe meet for a lunching, and what they're trying to do is find what's called referral partners. 
And that's why we, we're talking about it right here. So instead of you trying to go uh, pre-market to doctors, you may want to opt in one of these business networking groups where, where there are CPAs, where there are attorneys, where there are maybe medical sales reps there. And just start there and just say, hey, I'm really looking and maybe getting this business. Or you may just, just say, I am getting into this business of medical billing. Tell me about some of the people that you're dealing with and some of the struggles that they're talking about uh, whenever you're talking with your doctors. That's going to get you a lot of information right then and there. Yeah, yeah. You talk to a CPA who does the uh, uh, books for a doctor, and they'll mostly, most of them will tell you that most of their doctors are struggling, don't know what they're doing, uh, their cash flow is really, you know, in trouble, and uh, that's why they've hired a CPA. But there is a way to go out on the web, on our website, and actually look for the doctors in your area. If you'd like to get a feel for the number of doctors that are in your area, just go to our website there, and I think it's under. Uh, Income potential. Income potential. Under income potential, you'll see that there's a medical billing income calculator. Some of you have seen that. Patrick and I have done that before. Income replacement calculator. But one we haven't talked about in a long time is the find doctors in my area. And all you have to do is put in your zip code right there and then click and see the results. And this is basically what you're going to find. It can be listed out in family doctors, medical providers, chiropractors. Uh, even if you just type in in a Google search, find family doctors in your zip code. This is what you're going to kind of identify. You're going to find out that you're going to hit that Google map there and it's going to start showing you all the doctors and maybe all the clinics that are around you. That's a good way to do a little bit of market analysis as well. Just kind of just go through this, this process here. Yeah, it'll pinpoint them. Look at all the little flags. You can't see them all. They're kind of tiny on this uh, screenshot here, but they're all over the place here. This is the looks like the Dallas Fort Worth area, but folks, any area of the country, uh, and you can zoom out on that map to see how far out you need to go maybe to get clients. But folks, it doesn't matter what side. Look, we've got licensees on the top of mountains in Tennessee, right? Population four hundred that still have clients and are, are making a great income working from their home. So it's a huge market. Any area of the country, thousands of medical providers out there, not just doctors, but as you saw earlier, some of the specialties that were listed there on that. Uh, you can click on one of those specialties and it'll instantly show you how many there are out there. So go utilize exactly. that tool on our website. I think you'll find it interesting. And, and what's interesting, I, I think, uh, don't don't just keep your scope with your zip code. Uh, you may have relatives that live in Indiana. You may have relatives that live in Florida. You may have a friend that lives in Florida. Right. Uh, find out what their zip codes are. Just do a search out in those areas, and you're going to find out. If you look at this particular map, right above where it says Google, down there at the very bottom, you'll see that when we type in medical doctors here, there's 9,300 medical doctors within our zip code area. And, and hopefully that will help you understand that there's no way we can saturate the market, even no. if we have every licensee of ours in our area, we could even reach all of these doctors. Yeah, here's here's a good uh, way that some people do it. Uh, they'll partner, uh, maybe it's not even a financial partnership, but maybe you do have uh, you know, a relative in another city that you say, look, I'm getting into this business, and if you want to, you can work with me to find clients in your area. We'll start That's doing right. the billing, because guys, it don't have to be local, right? It's all over the internet, it's through the cloud, right? And so that you can give them a portion of the profits from that client and let them build a business just by going out and finding clients for you. Exactly. Yeah. And so just start doing your due diligence. Do your if you're gonna do any pre-marketing, do it as you know, you're just doing some market analysis. And this is one of the ways that you can certainly do that. Yeah. Uh, Dev, you got a question here. Many doctors have some form of billing, whether it's in-house or outsourced, and they are in contract. How can we get their business? Well, Deb, that's how, and that's what we teach you in that training class. Because guess what? Every doctor is doing billing. We know that from the very beginning. Right. They're either doing it <laughs> yeah. themselves with their own staff, or they've already outsourced it to another company. So how is it that our licensees are signing up doctors every day? It's because of what we teach them, the secrets we've learned over these 21 years as to go out, how to go out and be competitive and yes, I know most of the doctors who've outsourced have some sort of contract with those uh, billing companies. But if we point out in our analysis of that practice that they're not collecting but maybe 70% of what they should be, then that company is in breach of contract 
and that contract is is worthless. Exactly. So there are ways to replace the current people uh, that the doctor is billing, having having doing the billing, uh, and do it all legally. Yeah, absolutely. So that, that that's one of the best ways that you'll be able to do that. Okay, now we talked about this already, and I I think from our standpoint, uh, Patrick, I think American Business Systems uh, and our group of of wizards behind uh, what we have here, uh, you know, especially Jason. Some of you may know who Jason is. You, you may be talking with Jason, but uh, it's 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 the power of what we have here, and then our other partners that help us put our websites together and everything else. I, I think we've got one of the best websites out there. And then sometimes we get lost within the virtual brochure. So let's talk about these two sources to actually start learning uh, what, why people are doing their due diligence. Well, first of all, the screenshot on the left there is our actual website, absystems.com. And most of you went there probably to even get on this webinar initially. But if you click the orange button at the top or bottom there on that screen, uh, then it will take you into a section where you can actually sign up for our virtual brochure. Now, used to, we had printed materials and DVDs and all kinds of stuff that we would send out to people in the mail. That was years ago. Then we learned we can put all that online and save some money and time for everybody. So you instantly get access to the virtual brochure, which has video explanations of our software. It also has demonstrations of our various services that you can offer and testimonials from licensees who've actually been through our training and now have gone out and built successful businesses. So invaluable, dozens and dozens of web pages of information that you'll have access to there. And Patrick, you and I just did a, a webinar, what, two weeks ago? <laughs> on how, yeah, on the webinars that we've done, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and folks, as we go back and we look at the webinars that we've done and from the information that we've given over the, my goodness, since Patrick and I have been doing this, you know, together on our Wednesday webinars, Patrick, we, we've covered a lot of information, everything from probably, the, the, hold up that book again from Entrepreneur Magazine. Yeah. The one how to start, yeah, that one. Yeah. We've probably held, we've probably gone through every single topic that's in that particular book. That's right. On that's our webinars. Right. And, uh, and so, folks, I mean, we, we give you the information and really what to do. However, we know that with any type of business, you really need a vehicle in which to do that, and American Business Systems can certainly help you be successful in that. So yeah, go back and watch those other webinars in, from in the past. And, and you know what, Eric, this is a good resource uh, as far as doing your due diligence on, on this industry. Uh, this book is, uh, I, I forget how much, 20 bucks, probably less than that on Amazon, right? Maybe it's worth 20 bucks for you to research and see if this business is for real. And then when you get back to the back and see that we're the only business opportunity company that Entrepreneur recommends that you, you know, get involved with, uh, that should be credibility building right there for you. So uh, good information. Hey, by the way, the blog, it's on our website there under news and then blog. And it has all these webinars recorded. And if you go down to the bottom of each page, it says, I think, older articles. This is when blogs were usually just print, uh, not videos, but our, ours are mostly videos. And you can go previous, 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 and see literally uh, back, what, to 2008 or something. It's way back there. Yeah. I mean, there, there's, a, there's a boatload of information out there for you to go through. Yeah. And with that, what you'll find in that block, one of the things that they can find is licensee testimonials. Now, you just did one not too long ago with uh, a, a gal named Tracy Clark. Uh, but uh, I'm going to put up a couple of these because Patrick, you really like to do this. This is this is separate from our webinars. These are just you and the licensee just chatting. And so let's talk about maybe the interview that you did uh, not too long ago with Tim Warren out of Alabama. Yeah, Tim is an amazing guy. He's built a, a huge business with no background whatsoever. And in fact, Tim is now working with us on doing some of our webinars for licensees as an instructor. Right. Going to do one here soon uh, on, on implementation, you know, how to get a doctor up and running the smoothest. So uh, he's not only proven that he can build a business, but he's also proven that he believes in what we're doing so much. He wants to be a part of our, you know, our training staff, so to speak. Uh, let's see. There's uh, that's Scott. Uh, what's his last name? 
Matheson. Yeah, Matheson, I forgot. And uh, <laughs> Scott, that's showing him graduating, by the way. We give, him, we give you a certificate that certifies you as a medical revenue manager. And uh, Scott has built a fantastic business here as well. So these are just examples of some of those webinars you'll see there on the blog. Go back and watch them, folks. Look, Eric and I can say just about anything, right? And uh, exactly. whether it's true or not, you don't know how to prove that or not. But these are real people. Some of them have opened their own offices and hired staff. And if you ask them nicely, um, might even let you come and visit them if you wanted to take the time to do that, to prove to yourself uh, that it's real. Here's Rene Hermes. He's up in the Chicago area, has built a huge medical billing business. And in fact, has gotten into other services that he offers to our licensees, such as credentialing, uh, to get people up to speed on some things that they might not want to get involved with themselves. So he's, he's a perfect example of somebody who came to this country, uh, didn't know one single soul in the Chicago area when he came to our training. When he got back, he went out and it just took him a month or so to get his first client and then he was off and running. Now he's got an office with staff members. He's one of the ones that you could actually go visit if you wanted to. But we'll yeah, give absolutely. you the names of these people to talk to as well. Yeah, and, and Tammy, you're asking, can, I, can you talk with an ABS licensee in my state? Uh, check with your ABS rep, the, the, the individual that you're talking with, and let's see if we can find someone in your state, maybe someone close to you enough uh, that we can uh, hook you up to. But, you know, step five of what we were talking about doing your due diligence was go out there and watch some of those recordings uh, that we have out there on just the interviews. Then, uh, again, we have... Uh, it's it's you know it's fun, Patrick. Uh, is what I'm like and, and what I'm hearing from our licensees. They actually want to be on our reference call list, folks. They remember being where you're sitting, uh, and and the reason that folks that are on our uh, that that would li literally take your phone call is because they know they know what you're going through and right. the questions that you're going to be asking. And uh, so please take advantage of of call talking to people. Like Patrick said, he and I can talk all day long, but talk to people who are actually in the business and how they got their business going. Yep. That's the best way to do it. All right. Now let's talk about the industry. Now, Patrick, I know that you and I love to talk about this industry. And so we've put up three websites here for folks to go after and look at. First of all, you see up in the left-hand corner called Medscape. Medscape is a great website to kind of keep up with what's going on. The one in the middle called Fierce Practice Management is another one. And then the one that we probably go to a lot is the Healthcare Finance News. Great information on all these websites. And so when Patrick and I are doing our webinars, a lot of times we'll go here to bring you more information about what's going on in this industry. Yeah, just sign up for their email newsletters and you'll get regular information from these uh, organizations about what's going on in this industry. And folks, if there's anything I tell people, Eric, that this is not a fad, this is not a business that's here today and gone tomorrow, this is something that's going to be around for a long time. It has been around for a long time and will be for many, many years to come because as long as there are doctors and there are people who get sick, uh, somebody has to bill somebody so the doctor can get paid. Exactly. So this is one way that you can do and investigate the industry, look at the market, what's going on. Another one is maybe you want to get... Uh, uh, sign up for a magazine called BC, that's Building and Coding Magazine. Patrick, talk a little bit about this magazine and what you do to contribute to this magazine. Yeah, uh, I'm on the editorial board of this magazine. It has nothing to do with American business systems. It's been in business for years uh, out on its own, and it has authors from all, you know, across the field in this industry. But they invited me to be on the editorial board because I am the CEO of the nation's largest network of independent medical billing companies. And so this magazine is for billing company owners, as well as for people who work inside the doctor's office, office staff. Uh, but yeah, I, I have uh, regular articles in each one of the issues of this magazine as well. So good resource. Uh, again, uh, we have a very special subscription rate for our licensees to get this magazine. But I think the regular subscription is still only about maybe $30 a year. It's, it's very inexpensive. And, and and they've got an online service. You can go check them out there. But if, as you're doing your, your due diligence, you're going to want to be checking out this industry. And, and another way is, is, hey, find out if there is a trade show in your area having to do with medical industry at anything, whether it's medical billing, whether it's you know something about health care, whether it's whatever it might be. Just go check that out. Go just, just 
go walk through and see if uh, what, what kind of uh, you can even get some leads through there as well. Sure. I mean, you'll find out how real and how big this industry is once you start to talking to people at these types of conventions and trade shows. Uh, they're all over the place. Just about every major city has one going on uh, at least once a month. So uh, call your local chamber of commerce and just ask them when the next or if they have a list of uh, expos and conventions coming up in, in your city. Yeah. And don't be afraid to check out your competition. Go out there on the internet. Go find out about other medical billing services that are out there. Go see what they're doing, what they're promoting. Uh, you know, call them up if you want to. Just say, hey, uh, you know, I, 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 I'd like to know more about your services. And just ask them. And what you'll find is, is that if you've paid attention to, enough to our webinars, you're going to find out that you may know is just as much as they do as well. Yeah. Hey, somebody asked for the ISBN of this book. I think they're talking about this book. So I'm going to type that in the chat box there. Oh, sure. Yeah. Well, it looks like we are getting close up to the top of the hour. We're about nine minutes from the from the hour here. I'm going to keep going while Patrick's looking that in, and we'll chat that in. But uh, number eight, as we're looking here, and as we've said already, we would love to host you here at American Business Systems in our, in our corporate office. Uh, folks, we are truly just above Fort Worth. Uh, so if you'd like to, if you're within the driving distance, let's say four or five hours away. So you may live in Oklahoma City, you may be in Houston, uh, you may be somewhere in Missouri or even in New Mexico, just enough where you can drive in here. It might be a day drive for you. We would encourage you to come on by and visit us here at our office. Uh, however, if you want to fly in uh, you would certainly want to fly into the Dallas Fort Worth area airport. That would be DFW Airport. Uh, that that will at least help you get pretty close to our office from there. It's about a 25, 30 minute drive from the airport uh, from there. If you'd like to do that, uh, talk with one of us here at ABS, whoever you might be dealing with. We'll certainly uh, arrange maybe coming by and picking you up, bring you back uh, to the office, spend some time with you there. Uh, maybe take you to lunch or something like that. We'd be happy to do that. And then, hey, we'll take you back to the airport and then uh, just spend that day with you. We, we, we would love to do that. We know it's important. Uh, and the amount of money that you'd be spending with us and the trust that you're putting in with us. So please, you know, if you'd like to arrange your time. Patrick, I know that you'd like to meet with folks uh, as well as before they even become a licensee. A lot of times you talk to folks uh, as well. You'd like to talk with folks that are, thinking about coming into this business anyway. Sure, you know, folks, there's nothing that I, I love doing more at my stage in life uh, as the founder of the company than just helping people to be successful. And that starts, of course, with making the right decision. This business may not be for you. You may come down here and I talk you out of getting in our business. I've done that, haven't I, Eric? You have. <laughs> yeah, because there are certain circumstances that may or may not fit your different li you know, life. Now. That's one of the reasons, though, that I came up with our lifetime, uh, our, our money back, 100% money back guarantee, because, uh, you know, we want you to make the right decision. If you come to the training and set to the training and at the end of the week think, you know what, this is really not what I thought it was going to be, uh, you can ask for your money back, 100% of it. And we give you every penny of your licensee fee back. The reason I did that and the reason we came up with lifetime support is because we want to make sure that you are successful. Remember, we make money as you are successful in the business, as well as from the licensing fee. So we want everybody to be successful. And if you're not gonna be uh, somebody that we think can be successful in the business, we'll recommend that you go buy uh, the ice cream parlor that you've always wanted to open up or something. Exactly. Uh, work with teenagers uh, 80 hours a week that can't even keep <laughs> one room. There you go. All right, let's try to get through these last couple of steps and then we'll take some more questions. We've got some more questions that have come in and we certainly wanna answer those, but you know, Build a plan. Now, we didn't say build a business plan. We were talking about build a plan, a plan of action of what you're going to do. What are your next steps? Uh, certainly, we've already shown you what you can do on our website. Uh, we have what we call our own white paper. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about who we are. But basically, everything you see here that we have in print is actually on our website anyway. Uh, so if you want to check us out there and, and do that. Another thing that you can do is order Patrick's book, uh, How to Reprogram Yourself. I can't, Patrick, I can't, I've lost count of the people who have said, I went out on Amazon, I bought Patrick's book, read it, and that was the thing that helped me 
keep moving forward with that. Now, just real quickly, I know we're up at the, getting close to the top of the hour, but tell everybody why you wrote the book because I think people, like you said, they kind of have a ceiling that they kind of bump up against there. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, back in uh, when I first read this, wrote this book back in 19, uh, it was about 2004, I think, when I first published it. It was uh, because I had a mental ceiling uh, as to what I thought I could do success-wise and income-wise. And I didn't know how to break through that. Well, after I read a book by Shad Helmstetter, he's a PhD. He, he wrote a book called What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. It dawned on me that what I was lacking was the right voices inside my head, the right tapes playing. And so I actually learned how to reprogram myself for success. I wrote my own book based on that. And uh, it's been uh, really a godsend to a lot of people who've read it because they realized at some point that the reason they've been held back is because of those negative voices that are going on inside there. It's not the external circumstances that are important. It's what's going on in between your two ears. So once you've solved that, you get beyond that and then you can be as successful as you want to be. So you can get these books, as Eric said, on... Yeah, uh, so let me... Yeah, there's, there it is on Amazon. Yep, right. Right there on Amazon.com, you can uh, certainly order that book. Uh, you can order the Cash Crunch, the Cash Flow book. You can certainly get either one of those. But, um, you know, Patrick, let's offer uh, a little bit to those that are on the audience today. If you'd yes. like to get a copy of these books in an ebook format, uh, you'd like to get the, the, uh, the Success Book or the Cash Crunch, the Cash Flow. Uh, as soon as the webinar is over today, get in touch with the, the person that brought you here to the webinar, uh, one of our ABS reps, say, hey, I'd like to get a copy of one of those ebooks, and uh, we, we can actually email that out to you, and then you can start reading it yourself. Sure. How about that? There you go. Good. So that's part of building your plan. That's us giving back to you today, and we want you to have that. Lastly, uh, as we kind of wrap it up here, uh, I think there's no better thing that people can do, Patrick, than... Uh, Take, take, take this on a test drive. Yeah, and the best way to do that is just to get back with your ABS rep and say, look, I've heard all about this iClaim billing software that you have that's in the cloud and the EMRX electronic medical record system. I want to see it for myself because, folks, once you see it, it all becomes real. And it'll dawn on you why we can reduce rejection rate for doctors uh, and, and get them more money than they've ever seen before coming in. It's all about the technology and we'll be glad to do that. But Eric, there's another reason why we do this demo, right? Exactly. And this is a way that we can demonstrate to you what we do to help you get your client. Uh, that's the way I like to position it. You know, one way is that you're going to learn about this business in real time format of you just knowing what I claim an EMRX is. However, on the other side that you learn is what to expect, what we do to help you get those clients. So folks, we can't encourage you enough. We try to we try to set up a, at least two to three demos every week with prospective licensees like yourself every single week. Uh, our calendars are open. We would love to do this with you. Get with your ABS rep. We'd love to kind of step you through that. You, you'll be as impressed as the doctors will be when we do these demos for your doctors. They are blown away. Okay, exactly. great webinar, Eric. We still have a few questions left. There.